Want to live a long and happy life? Easy. Just avoid these dangerous situations. Throw out your bed. Falling out of bed kills 450 people annually. Of course, always watch what you eat. And eat from. Never use a vending machine or even stand close to one. They kill 13 people a year. And ants? They cause 30 deaths per year. So if you see ants, run. But not too fast. Six runners die per year during races. So stay indoors, but try not to move. 18,000 deaths occur from accidental injuries in the home. Baths alone kill 340 people. Oh, and not to mention heart disease, respiratory illnesses, stroke, cancer, and unintentional injuries. If you're able to avoid all this, you will greatly increase your chances of living a long and happy life. The truth is, the only way to protect yourself is to make sure you can provide for your loved ones no matter what happens, even if you're one of the 130 people killed by deer. Life insurance is the safety net that protects your family financially if you can't be there to support them. A life insurance policy provides a lump sum of money that is paid to your beneficiaries upon your death. The money can be used for lost income, funeral expenses, bills, funding a child's college education, and more. Whatever you need, there's a policy right for you. Term life insurance is coverage intended for a specific period of time, typically from five to 30 years. Whole life or permanent life insurance covers you for life and includes a savings component that helps grow tax deferred income that after time can be used as a loan to pay premiums or as added death benefits for your beneficiaries. Term and whole life insurance policies require a medical exam but there are also no medical exam life insurance policies that can be secured in as quickly as 24 hours. Interested in learning more about life insurance and why you should have it? Visit our Learning Center or FAQ page. If you're ready to get started or have questions for our life insurance representatives, fill out the form below for a free life insurance quote today. Then celebrate your new security by going to the beach. Sharks only kill five people a year, less than all these things. And on today's show, why these three life insurance retirement income strategies are big. Part five of this week's series on life insurance income strategies with the life insurance income strategist, Don Prinz, CLU CHFC. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Innsmark, Live Specs, and Backroom Technician. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to day five, Don. Good to see you, Steve. Boy, we're talking, man, we've been doing strategies all this week. <laughs> and we have three big ones for this entire show today. And let's talk about it because the first one I want to ask you about is stretch IRA. Now, I, you would think, you would think by now, everybody understands this, but why don't you walk us through the basic um, uh, LED kind of approach to this because we saw many people that say, Steve, can you show me how to stretch my IRA? Sure, it's really pretty straightforward. With a stretch IRA, you have uh, the client making their children the beneficiaries of the IRA and the minimum distributions will continue both from the parents and then continue on uh, with the kids after the parents are, uh, have died. And it's a way to continue some of that tax deferral benefit of the IRA through to the next generation. Okay, so, so and when we think about this, I've noticed that some qualified plans with, with, that use, like annuities as an example, they'll actually let you do joint beneficiaries, right, where you could have your yourself on there and maybe your child. There's another way to stretch qualified plans a little way. You still have to pay tax, but it stretches it out to another generation. That's right. Looking at stretch stretch options and the alternatives that you have for this could be really huge. And this is one of the reasons why we keep bringing it up. It's kind of a neglected area. And especially when you think of human longevity and everybody's life expectancy going out, stretch IRAs are a thing to look at. Yeah. And it's something that if you show that to a client who has a large IRA or, uh, and they have an interest in passing assets to heirs, it's something that can be um, perceived very favorably from clients. Now, sometimes it's not the stretch IRA. I really don't need the money and I am charitably given. Talk a little bit about how can I use that with a charity? Yeah. And one of the big problems with IRAs is that they're great when they're accumulating, but when the money comes out, the pretty heavy tax. And so, if you make the beneficiary of your IRA a charity, then you eliminate that tax issue. And in many cases, by making gifts to an irrevocable life insurance trust, you can replace the asset, the net asset for the heirs, if, if that's important mm -hmm. to you, at a significantly lower cost uh, than the cost of, of what you would have left the net amount from the IRA. So 
it, it, in a lot of cases, it doesn't make a lot of sense to leave the IRA to the heirs if you can replace it with an irrevocable life insurance trust and benefit a favored charity. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a win-win-win. I like the ability to contribute my qualified plan, IRA, whatever, to a charity of my choice as long as it's IRS approved. And I want to be able to do that. And then I always want to make sure I can help my beneficiaries out if that's a key issue. Wow, I just gave away this chunk of money to the charity, but now my heirs feel kind of like I forgot them. Now I can do what you suggested, which is create an islet, an irrevocable life insurance trust, install a death benefit life insurance policy in there, and I can replace that at death, and that'll go tax-free to my heirs. By the way, that I don't know if that IRA would have went tax-free to my heirs. Yeah, I mean, there certainly would have been income tax uh, whenever the money came out, either for the client or their heirs. And by using an irrevocable life insurance trust, the death benefit is income tax free. So well, in a lot of cases, you have to look at you have to look at it and analyze it. But in a lot of cases, it's going to be far better for the client. Now walk us through the basics of a Roth conversion because everybody's going to talk. And in the second segment, we're going to get to this in much more detail. But walk me through the basics of a Roth conversion. Why are we even looking at this? Yeah, uh, one of the things that we've spent a lot of time analyzing and that there's huge interest in from the advisor community is converting IRAs to Roth IRAs. Obviously, the big negative is whatever money you convert from the IRA to the Roth causes ordinary income tax on that amount. And so you have to do an analysis to see if paying the tax uh, for moving that money from the IRA to the Roth provides you know, enough benefit mm -hmm. in the Roth compared to the IRA so that it's, it's something worth doing. Well, can, let's walk through this because I, I think sure. this is a really good map out here and gives me two or three ideas on why this works. Sure. Uh, here's an example. Aaron and Susan Tyler, they're age 60 and 55. They have a million dollars in an IRA. They're in a 45% tax bracket, so a relatively high combined tax bracket. If they move their million dollars in from an IRA to a Roth, it's going to cost a $450,000 income tax liability. So that's, that's a lot. So the question becomes, you know, why do that? Uh, that's obviously a big tax bite. And here, as you can see, with the IRA, you're going to have minimum distributions. So you're going to pay out over their life expectancy, uh, or actually to age 99, you're going to pay out $6.4 million. After tax, you'll have about $3.5 million for the client during their uh, retirement years. And the plan will end up with about $2 million. With the Roth, there are no minimum distribution requirements uh, in this client-owned case. And you have a Roth with $21 million out at age 99. So, you know, 21 million versus three and a half plus two, big difference mm -hmm. for the $450,000 of tax you paid. So that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are looking at Roth conversions because Roths can accumulate mm. and pay out tax free. Uh, another example of the same thing is where we keep, again, we had three and a half million from the IRA, the status quo plan. If we took out the same three and a half million from the Roth, well, instead of $2 million at age 99, we've got almost 11, excuse me, almost $11 million in the mm. Roth. So again, same income, but $11 million versus $2 million. Is it worth it to pay $450,000 of tax now to get those benefits? And then one last thing I'll, I'll say is that where someone is trying to create a lot of wealth for the next generation, the Roth can be really incredible. Uh, you have to study these mathematics, but I promise you they are correct. And if you keep the Roth intact throughout the life expectancy of the client and then throughout the retirement of the, of the heirs, you end up with $3 million with the IRA for the heirs versus $30 million of net after-tax cash flow paid out to the next generation. So Roths, because they can grow for so long on a tax-free basis and all the distributions are tax-free, can be monumental wealth and generational transfer tax devices. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about some of the economics of Roth conversions to make sure we're all on the same page and that the math works with good logic. We'll be right back after the break. It's not how much money you make for your clients, it's how much money they get to keep, especially in retirement. But retirement income could cause Social Security benefits to be taxed. One tax advantage alternative is life insurance designed as a non-modified endowment contract that can generate tax-free income without taxing Social Security benefits. These contracts offer differing funding options depending upon your client's risk tolerance. For more information on how life insurance can be part of your retirement planning, just email me at steve at downtobusiness.tv. Brought to you by Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to our second segment. Of course, we're with Don Prin. He's a life insurance income strategist. And we're talking about converting 
you know, Roth IRAs, and usually when I say converting Roth IRAs and look at the economics, we don't usually get life insurance in that. We're going to show you at the end of the segment, this could be a play and why this has impact for the client. Walk us through this basic case study so we can start to, get, to really garnish the economic value of this. Sure, Steve. So here we have Simon and Ann Scott. They're age 55 and 50. They're in a 40% income tax bracket. They've got a $6 million net worth. And we can kind of look at their financial picture here with this sort of client information summary. Here you see they have liquid assets, a million dollars in taxable, a million dollars in tax exempt uh, bonds, equity assets, two and a half million, retirement plan assets, 600,000 and so on. So their total estate assets are about $6 million. So what we want to do is look at this situation and see if they just left their IRA, IRA alone and didn't convert it to the Roth, where would we be? And let's take a look at that. So, and again, just to summarize, what we're going to show you is keep the IRA, their long range net worth is going to be six and a half million. And let me show you sort of what that looks like. So here's how, again, using, putting all the assets into our Wealthy and Wise uh, software platform, projecting everything out, here is how their net worth will fare over time, leaving the IRA intact. They'll end up with six and a half million dollars in net worth uh, over until age 95. Now, so that's sort of option one, the status quo. Option two is where we convert to a Roth. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert it over time, over eight years. So we're not going to pay all that tax. Like we did in the first segment. That's yeah. right. We're not going to hit that tax because we're going to have a higher tax bracket. So as you can see, they have $600,000 in their IRA. We're going to liquidate it over eight years, $100,000 a year, paying $40,000 a year in tax. And that's all accounted for in our Wealthy and Wise Wealth Analysis, the projection to the future. And so... If we want to look and see the impact of that, let's go here. Okay, so this is option two. As you can see, if we convert the IRA to the Roth over that eight year period, we end up with a $10 million net worth. And just to kind of compare the IRA versus the Roth conversion, with the IRA, you end up with six and a half million dollars in net worth. With the Roth conversion, including the tax that you have to pay. Net of, net of the tax. Net of the tax. You end up with $10 million mm -hmm. out at age uh, age 100. Well, that's huge, actually, when you think about the spread on that. Yeah, so the question, is it worth paying the tax in this particular example? The answer is clearly yes. And of course, remember, he amortized this. It wasn't a one-time, one-lump deposit. You know, we paid tax on that. We actually scheduled this over some time, and bracket pumping is excellent for Roth conversions. Exactly. Now we wanted to know, okay, if we reposition some assets into life insurance, can we make that $10 million net worth go up? And so go ahead and let's look at that. This is the policy that we recommended. It has a $63,000 premium for 10 years, income distribution starting at age 65, the 11th year, $2 million level death benefit. And so using this policy, we wanted to see the effect on overall net worth for the client. And so we can go to the next one, or I can get it. Okay, so here's option three, which is the Roth conversion and the purchase of, a, uh, of the life insurance policy we, ju we just reviewed. So here you can see that the net worth grows to 15 million because of the efficiency of the tax accumulation and tax-free and tax distributions. And then here you have a comparison, option one, which was leave the IRA alone. You end up with six and a half million. Option two, convert the IRA to a Roth. We end up with 10. Option three, convert the IRA to a Roth and purchase the life insurance policy. We end up with 15 million of net worth. Uh, wealth to heirs, a similar comparison. As you can see there, you have uh, 6 million, 10 million, or 15 million. So clearly better for the client, clearly better for the client's family and heirs. And of course, this will make that judgment call for you to say, is the economics of this really worth looking at? And we can always depend on a software system like this to give us the real detail. That's why I liked in our first segment, we paid the tax all in one shot. In this area, we amortized it over about a nine to 10 year period to see if that was better doing a little bit of bracket pumping. Now let's do one more thing before we leave the show. Sure. Uh, show me this last one that you're talking about because this is kind of part of the economics of a Roth conversion as well. 